What does Africa need? And how then do we work with Britain? <coughs> History is present and poignant in South Africa. During her brief trip, Theresa May visited the cell Nelson Mandela was held in for 18 years. Mrs May also used this trip to say the UK would fundamentally shift the way it spends aid money towards building private enterprise and tackling political and economic instability. The dynamic, fast-growing economies of Africa have many suitors these days, and Theresa May dismissed suggestions that Britain had missed the boat. But because of Brexit, the UK is looking for expanded trade opportunities beyond the European Union, which at the moment is by far our biggest market. But with Brexit talk seemingly stalled and time to do a deal running out, I asked the Prime Minister how she planned to break the deadlock. Uh, our negotiating teams with the European Commission are sitting down and going through remaining details on the withdrawal agreement. I will have opportunities to discuss them collectively with European leaders that are coming up in the coming weeks. So you're aiming for a deal in October, but under what circumstances would you walk away from the table and say the deal on offer uh, is simply not acceptable? We'll go for a no deal, we'll crash out. What circumstances would you do that? Well, first of all, we're working for a good deal. We've put forward our proposal for a good deal. I believe that that deal is in the to the benefit not only of the UK, but of the European Union. But it's absolutely right that as a government, we take the common sense approach of saying we don't know what the negotiations outcome will be. That's why we make the preparations for no deal, and we've stepped up those preparations and, and for no deal. <laughs> Theresa May will need some nifty political footwork to get through the autumn. But for today, the troubles of Brussels and Westminster seemed far away. Ben Wright, BBC News, Cape Town. So what impact will this new investment in Africa have on both African economies and the UK? And how important could it prove to be for post-Brexit Britain? Our economics editor Kamal Ahmed reports. Growing three times as fast as Britain, with a young and dynamic population, Kenya is Africa's economic story in microcosm. A small economy still fighting poverty and allegations of political corruption, but with big ambitions to trade confidently with Britain and the rest of the world. The message that we have is all we are interested in are win-win proposals that actually enable all of us to take advantage of the opportunities that exist to create mutually beneficial prosperity. So, what is the value of the UK's trade with Africa? Let's take the top five economies in Africa for Britain's exports for goods. Over the last 10 years, there's not been a huge amount of change, between five and seven billion pounds a year. That might sound like a lot, but it's less than we export to, for example, Spain. In total, we export £8.4 billion pounds of goods to Africa every year. Again, sounds pretty good. But the total amount we export to the European Union, £164.1 billion. Pounds. And what about the PM's pledge to be the biggest foreign investor in Africa amongst the G7 countries? Those are the largest economies in the world. Well, we are nearly there already. The US invests around £44.3 billion, the UK just behind at £42.7 billion, and France, the third biggest G7 investor, £38 billion. But look at this. In 2011, China invested just £17.8 billion in Africa. By 2016, that figure had grown to 41.1 billion pounds. At that rate of change, China will soon overtake Britain, showing that competition for African trade is high. The big question is this, will Britain leaving the European Union be a boost or a burden for trade with Africa? In the next two, three, four, five years, the focus for the UK is going to be replacing the existing arrangements that already exist via the EU. In the long run, could the UK do things differently from the EU? Could it be more generous in certain areas? Possibly. But that's a question for five or ten years' time. Tomorrow, a next stop for the PM, Nigeria, the largest economy on the continent that will boast a third of the world's population by 2050. There are opportunities to be had on trade, but there are plenty of countries led by China competing for them. Kamal Ahmed, 
BBC News.